G'day everyone, Virtual Conquer 85 here. Uh, this video I've actually been meaning to get out for quite some time. I actually wanted it released around the same time as the 1.2.1 PBR and non PBR versions. Unfortunately, uh, my computer had some technical is issues and wasn't able to make it. Uh, but better late than never. And I just wanted to go over some of the uh, troubles that people have been having with either versions and just to point out a few features and that uh, so first that will do the PBR version when you first uh, load it up and you download the correct uh, texture pack to use with PBR uh, you'll notice that you end up with these checkered patterns in your textures that is because uh, you actually need to select the correct texture pack resolution within the shader options. So to do that you just need to go into your shader options and change the texture pack resolution. Now the newest uh, supported texture pack is a 512 texture pack. So once you've done that you just hit done and there you go. That's all fixed. Uh, now the other problem that people have been having with uh, the PBR version is this. So if you load up any texture pack with the PBR version that doesn't have supported PBR textures this is what you'll end up getting. Uh, the PBR version needs the supported textures in order for it to work properly and it really doesn't like any other type of specular. Uh, so if you're seeing this then please go and download the non-PBR version if you don't want to use uh, the supported PBR textures. Alright so when you come to our website you can click on the 1.2 the PBR version needs these add-ons okay alright that one there is a full supported texture pack this one here is just an add-on you'll need to go and download the original Chroma Hills texture pack for it to work. Uh, if you're not using either one of these then please download the non-PBR version. Uh, PBR just doesn't you know, work by itself, it needs the texture support. Uh, so yeah, if you're not using these ones here, please use the non-PBR version. All right, now with the uh, PBR version we are also aware that there are quite a few bugs um, in particular with the um, PBR version. One being that the nights are no longer desaturated. All right, so this is how the nights look when they really should be looking like this. This is with the uh, nights desaturated. Um, so that, that is one uh, bug that we are aware of. Same with the torch being in your hand as well. Uh, it's not giving off the correct lighting. Uh, you can see there is light from it but it's not the correct colouring. And there are also uh, problems with the shader options as well with uh, several of them actually not working at all. Others uh, causing the shaders to crash. Um, these will hopefully be fixed later on down the track. Now if you do decide to go for the non-PBR version, uh, mainly I've, I've found that it's uh, better frame rates you'll get with it and way less bugs. Uh, there is actually a Chroma Hills extension just for the non-PBR version. If you go to our website you'll need to look for this post here and you can get access to a shared folder where you can get the uh, add-on for the non-PBR version. Now with the non-PBR expansion you will need to download the full Chroma Hills version from the creators website. Once you've done that load it in and load the add-on Chroma Hills texture on top and that way it will load in correctly. The last little fix for the non-PBR version is someone has pointed out the Voimetric Cloud coverage is not working. Uh, I do apologise, there was a bit of an overview that I missed. Uh, 
There is a quick and easy way to fix this. Alright, so what you'll need to do is open composite1.fsh and you'll need to scroll down to where you see the volumetric cloud coverage. Uh, what you want to do is double click on it so it highlights it. Hit Control C or copy. Then double click on the one above it, which is the cloud disperse. Hit Control F so we can find it. Go find next. Close that down. And we need to scroll up to line 1636 and you just need to highlight this little bit here and either hit Control V or right click and paste and that's it just hit save and your volumetric cloud coverage in the shader options will start working but the actual main focus with the Continuum non-PBR version is a huge range of shader options that are now available to you all. So once you have you know, load up your shader, you just go into your shader options and you'll be meted with this, a huge range of shader options. Now firstly, the profiles. Profiles now will load in high, uh, but there's also a cinematic mode. Now, basically what I've found out from uh, the survey that I got you all to take is that the majority of people actually load up the ultra preset and this actually answers a lot of questions that I've had over the past year or so with people you know, even with GTX 980s and 980 Ti's complaining that their frame rate is like around a 20-30 FPS mark now, Ultra was never meant to be used as a everyday playing preset, okay? That was basically exclusive for making cinematic videos or taking really good pictures. And that the high version was the one that everyone really should have been using, which is why when you load it up, it is in high. That's the default. And the other surprising thing as well is when I've asked how many people, what graphic cards you guys have. Very few actually have 980 Ti's or 980's and the majority actually have GTX 960's. Now with 960's your frame rate will tank. Uh, standard or high would be the maximum that you can go with with a GTX 960. High is basically your 970's, 980's, 980 Ti's. Um, and Ultra, like I said, was mainly just for cinematics. Although... With the newest one now, I've actually gone in and changed these. So it will, it will load in high, which is still my recommended one. But now you can choose Ultra. And you won't lose as much frame rate as what you would have been before. It still drops. Ultra still has, you know, some slightly better features to it. Um, but yeah, the cinematic one you can see from 49. All the way down to 36. This one is what I would recommend for taking pictures and making cinematics with. Just because it will have, you know, less artifacting in the GI and better POM and you know just just sort of a few minor things here and there just up in the samples to make it look smoother uh, but we'll go back to the the high preset because that gives us the best uh, best performance to visuals in my opinion uh, under global illumination uh, in here you can go in and change the new GI quality I wouldn't recommend turning that off that was more of an experiment uh, that hasn't really panned out, so that, don't worry, worry about that one too much. This one here, you can go in and change the amount of samples. Each time you increase it, your frame rate will take a pretty big hit. Um, this one here is the old GI, which is Sonic Ether's GI. This one is, you know, being restructured and recoded by the Continuum team. Uh, this one here is got more artifacts, but it will run faster. 
So if you want to get some more performance but still want GI, we have a door to turn that on and it'll actually cancel out the new one. It's that simple. And same as you can just turn GI off if you want altogether. Dynamic weather in here. Uh, Cloud Shutter will be turned off for the high version and by default. Uh, what that does is basically enables the 2D clouds to cast shadows. So when you're using dynamic weather, when it becomes extremely overcast, the level of brightness will dim down quite a lot. The reason why I've left it off is because it will take about 10 frames of your overall FPS. Uh, and in here you can actually turn off individually you know, certain effects. So if you don't like the way the leaves are moving when dynamic weather is on, you can just turn them off individually, same with water, clouds and all that. Or you can just click this button here which will turn all of them off except for that one there. Now with the nighttime desaturation, you can see that the coloured blocks here, all the colour has been desaturated in it. Uh, and there is a bit of a greyish blue tint over everything. Uh, there were some requests if you know we could turn this off. So under lighting you can now come in and turn the night desaturation off. In doing that you can now see that you know all these colored blocks have their color back and there's no more of that bluish gray tint everywhere. Doing this won't actually increase or decrease your FPS. Um, but there's also another one which is for in caves as well. So when you're in uh, caves, it does the same sort of effect, a bit of a bluish gray uh, lighting over everything. And as you can see, the wall here is actually being desaturated. And if you turn this one off, the cave desaturation, you can now see the color of the wall and everything else is, you know, doesn't have that sort of bluish grey tint over it. Now, light jitter. Light jitter is uh, a thing that I just recently have put in. Um, I actually added it to my other shader, the super shaders. And it's basically to simulate the inconsistent uh, lighting that would be given off by torches. Now, it may be a bit hard to see here because I went for a more subtle effect of it. You might be able to see it happening more on the edges here. Uh, basically I did have this effect more noticeable but after a while it does start to give you a bit of a headache. It, it was yeah it was a bit too much so I've gone for a more subtle approach and I don't know I quite like this. It's very subtle and it just gives a bit of a you know inconsistent sort of lighting especially when you're in caves like this. Now like with every other effect, this one can also be changed. You can come in here and change the actual jitter strength, so how big the pulses are, plus the actual speed. So I've turned this up to basically its maximum. And you may actually be able to see the effect happening a bit better now. So you can come in and you know, play with it and get it to exactly how you want. And this is if you turn the actual speed of it up. So you, know, you can go in there and there's many different combinations that you can you know, play with to get exactly how you like. Or you can just leave it at default the way I set it up. Alright, so next up we have the lens flares. Now I've actually gone in and added a whole heap of uh, different lens flares. Uh, by default, the lens flare new is what's on in the non-PBR version. That's the one that I made up pretty much spe specifically for the classic version. Which is a mixture between the continuum lens flare which is from the PBR version and the Catman's lens flare. Now this one here is a Catman's lens flare. This is the one that's been in our shader for a long time but we've never le left it on by default just because it is uh, it's too much in, in our opinion and we haven't been a, the biggest fan of it but you know, we left it in there because well People obviously did like it because uh, I've seen quite a few videos with it on. Uh, the other one is the Super Shaders lens flare, which is from my other shader that I've created. 
which is this one here. It's not exact like the uh, one from Super Shaders because it did need a little bit of extra recoding to get it working in Continuum. But it is another one that you can you know, use if you so choose so. And lastly is the PBR Continuum version, which is this one here. Now this one here is nice and subtle and I loved it straight away but this was the problem that I had with it is that when you look right at the sun you get this massive glowing blob and I really didn't like that like to me that's what breaks a lot of lens flares like they smack you in the face with it but I did like pretty much all of it in general so I decided to go in and I actually came up with something a bit different which is what you'll see if you use the classic version. Which it will be on by default which is just a lens flare new. Which is this one here. As you can see it's got like the semicircle rainbows plus the little extra rainbow dots as well. And when you look at the actual sun it's nowhere near as blinding. I, this is my favorite out of all of them. And for once in pretty much the entire you know, continuum uh, creation, this will actually be on by default. Same as with the uh, PBR version. The other continuum shader, uh, their version of their lens flare will also be on by default. Um, but this one here you can have a choice. So you can go in and choose whichever one you like. That's pretty much all I wanted to go over. Uh, there is one thing that I wanted to point out to everyone about this. Right, you just need to excuse the uh, mess of shaders in here. I need to clean it out again. But you may start to notice in here all these uh, text documents start to appear. What these are are actually Optifine saving out your shader options. So whenever you come into here and you start tweaking any of these what it will actually do is it will actually save a version of it or like the settings in here All right, so you can actually come into any of these um, when you open them up it will give you all this which is actually really interesting if you think about it because what you can actually do now is, say with the classic version, you can come in here and spend you know, a couple of hours even fine-tuning everything and say you make a video and people absolutely love it. Is you can actually put the text document, not the actual shader, but the text document up for download in the description of your videos. And then what people have to do then is, as long as they're using the exact same shader version that matches it, they can actually just drop it in their shaders packs uh, folder directory and when next time when they actually load up the shader it will actually load with your presets. So if you've managed to you know, set it up so you get good frame rate, looks good, you can even come in and you know, do color desaturation, change the color stuff, the fog, you know, fully change the look of the shader and you can actually share your creation then with others if you so choose so, by just uploading the text document. And all people have to do, like I said, is just drop it in here. Next time when they load up the shader, all right, they load it up, double click or whatever, it'll actually load with their presets all set up in here. That's about it. I'll catch us all next time. Bye-bye.